Hello, everybody. I am doing a tag response to Ragged07. I haven't done one for her in a while. I usually, um, I've done a few for Jellicles forever, but I know she said she's moving, so she hasn't been on lately. And with the storm, um, literally yesterday, uh, Hurricane Sandy hit, and my area wasn't as bad as, say, as New York and New Jersey, but Rhode Island got pretty flat, uh, blasted a little uh pretty badly and but as you see we have electricity but i know a lot of people like my friend steve and my mother don't have electricity we were lucky i think because we are more inland and away from the and obviously away from the coast and i'm in a more populated area that the electricity tends to stay on better in those areas and i'm still using my handheld camera for some can't figure out why my webcam on my computer doesn't work but that's okay but anyway before i keep blabbing i liked uh, this with Stevie's Halloween tag. I don't know Stevie's, but um, I know Ragged07, so I'm technically doing it for her. And um, uh, these are more fun because I'm, I'm a horror freak. I know she kind of said that she doesn't really watch horror films and doesn't like to be scared. I do, on the other hand. So I'm just going to read them. <clears throat> Number one. Do you think it would be a tragedy or a blessing if Bigfoot never gets recognized as a living species by human science? Uh, it's kind of a hard question, but one, I don't believe in Bigfoot. General basic biology knowledge would kind of show that you can't really have Bigfoot. Um, at least in North America, I'm not sure about some areas, maybe they could be like a Bigfoot type creature in like the Amazon or maybe some very remote mountainous areas, but um, I think that would be kind of more of a it's hard to say because it would be a blessing because I think we can then focus on other stuff that I do think probably exist. Um, I think a lot of these paranormal groups, since I'm involved in the paranormal, tend to like to focus a little bit too much on Bigfoot, and it really is, in my opinion, all nonsense. Um, and, I mean, if Bigfoot was, like, living in, especially in America, America is, like, there's a lot, there is a lot of spacious places, but it's, you know, very inhabited. You know, you don't have, like, massive and massive amount of wilderness and stuff. And, and so it would be kind of a blessing maybe focus better on re, uh, focus resources on better locations but um, the tragedy would be is I think the idea of Bigfoot kind of brings out imagination in people um, just kind of like all like mythological creatures it kind of brings out sort of like a mysticism and fantasy and ma imagination so you know in that, in that aspect you know um, that's all I can say number two which monster would you most likely like to be devoured by and least like to be devoured by and why? Uh, it's kind of a weird question because I don't know. Some monsters, especially in monster movies, are technically real. I would most likely to be devoured by Godzilla. You know, he does. I don't think he's ever really eaten people, but if he would, he would just be one big gulp. And Godzilla rocks. He's cool. I like Godzilla. I don't mind being eaten by him. <laughs> It'd be kind of cool. Least, I think Jellicles mentioned zombies, and I'm kind of there with you. But zombies are kind of awesome too. But um, a shark. I think that would just really hurt, like Jaws. But anything that would like really like involves you suffering a lot with teeth ripping into your flesh, like zombies and um, werewolves and stuff like that. So. Um, I guess I'm going to go into by the pain aspect, the most prolonged suffering. Uh, but I would have to say a shark more, because I think you would tend to suffer more. Zombies, if they get you in the right area, you kind of die quickly. So, <laughs> it's not so bad. Number three. What do you think of modern horror films? Are they scary and entertaining, or are they lacking in plot and true scariness? This is kind of like a very heavy-handed question, because um, you can't bundle all movies together. Um, some are very scary and entertaining, and some are very lacking in plot and true scariness. Some of them are meant to lack plot and true scariness, kind of like slasher films. I mean, slasher movies are just meant to like be gory and funny and comical. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, the original Friday the 13th had a little bit of suspense in it, but the others were just like, you didn't watch it to be scared. You watched it to see people be, like, butchered. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that, yeah. Or even the Saw movies weren't scary. They were just um, movies meant to just watch people be brutally tortured. They're torture films. You know, that's the genre. 
is what you expect. Um, other ones, Cannibal Holocaust is not a scary film. It's a gruesome, violent film. That's what it is. It's what it's meant to be. That's what it's meant to be. Now, and there are some movies that you could find that I think are, you know, scary and dark or suspenseful. You know, it could be a little... Um, the Descent, recent ones, I'm trying to think, like The Descent. Some of the uh, f movies from France, um, ones uh, Frontiers and Inside, they were they were really good. They were gory, but they had some really creepy scenes in it. Um, there was a few movies. There was one movie called The Tunnel that was from Australia. Wasn't it was kind of long, but it had like really one creepy ass scene in it. It was it was actually really cool. If anybody seen it. Um, the Poughkeepsie Tapes is also really creepy. You can't really find it, but I think you could find it on YouTube. Um, but it, I think what made that kind of scary was it had a lot of realism in it. It actually had a lot of psychology in it. Oh, look, my, my, my head's gone. But, you know, so it's like, they're both. You know, I think the more scary ones are the more obscure ones that are not mainstream Hollywood. Uh, I know some people said that Paranormal Activity was kind of lame. I liked Paranormal Activity. Um, it reminded me of some of the more older horror films, especially ghost movies like The Haunting, where it was more like they use they leave it to your imagination, using noises and stuff like that. Um, some people didn't like the characters. Um, I want to address this, especially people under the age of 25. Yeah, you guys really do act like that. You know, most guys under the age of 25 act like a bunch of douchebags, and many women and girls under the age of 25 are a bunch of whiners. It's, you know, people are like, oh, they're so annoying. It's like, yeah, that's how you guys are. I hate to tell you. <laughs> You're annoying. <laughs> so, um, but I actually did like the Paranormal Activity films. Um, part 3 more, because Part 3 brought back a lot of nostalgia. It's like, I had a Teddy Bruxman. Um, when, when it comes to me in horror films, I will blab on a lot more. But, you know, like I said, it's both... I do like modern horror. I don't sometimes, it doesn't need a plot and scariness. I'm also a gore hound, so movies with just people being splattered everywhere, kind of, I kind of get into that too. So, anyway, before I keep going on, number four. What do you think of the Blair Witch Project? Scary or not? It was kind of like what I was mentioning about paranormal activity. I like the fact that it makes you use your imagination more. Maybe that's why many younger people don't like it, because many young people don't have imaginations anymore, because they're so, like, decentralized by, like, video games and stuff like that. You know, um, darkness and sound, I find that more scary, because it's like you're going into your mind, I'm like, ooh, what's behind that tree? What's behind that tree? Um, you know, or what's that? What's making that noise? Now, first time seeing it, it will be scary. After that, you, there's nothing, you know, to be scared about it. Um, I still liked it. It, it. I think it was a really good film. Um, and I think it definitely had suspenseful moments. I wouldn't say, so, yeah, more suspenseful rather than scary. So, um, yes, I like The Blair Witch Project. Number five, if your friend's family set you up to be terrified on hand camera on a punk TV show, would you laugh or be angry? Laugh. I think that's funny. Um, being scared is fun. Um, as long as it doesn't, like, harm me. Like, you know, if they scare me and then I run out in the middle of the road and get hit by a car, that would totally suck. But if a good scare is a good scare. Um, and now with my friends and family, it would probably be more like an act of revenge. If you ask my mother, my mother would mention about the snakes, fake snakes, of course, that I would leave in, like, her drawers, the silverwares, the refrigerator. And <laughs> surprised I didn't give her a heart attack. She was like practically ready to like die. I tormented my mother. Did it a few times with some other people, but it was my mom with this rubber snake. Really, really led to some good laughs. And I'm surprised she hasn't gotten revenge on me for that. Anyway. <clears throat> Number six. Do you ever realize a trick-or-treat candy... Did you, oh, I would receive a trick-or-treat candy that had been maliciously tampered with, razor blades inserted, etc. No, um... That whole razor blade thing turned out to be nothing more than an urban legend to uh, scare people because we're Americans and we like to be scared shitless over stuff. Uh, apparently it was based on an incident back in the 70s, but it was an uncle trying to get revenge on his brother or something like that, so he tried to poison the kids, but that's really, there was nothing about razor blades or anything like that. If anybody's... If someone's tampering with your kid's candy, it probably wasn't a stranger. It probably was, like, one of your relatives, I hate to tell you. Because, you know, in most crime cases, it's like the person knows who's doing it. So, anyway. Number seven. In your youth, was there a neighborhood haunted house? 
Describe it to us. Is there one in your area now? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, before the house burnt down, there was a house right near my house that people thought was haunted. There was all these rumors about Satanists living in there and everything like that. I don't know if it was true or not. Uh, it was an abandoned house. It was an old farmhouse. Um, supposedly there were Satanists in there and it was supposedly it was haunted. I sometimes wondered myself. He felt like I walked by there a few times. I always felt like you were being watched. And uh, but it burnt down. Um, one of my old videos, my, one of my earlier things I used to do for creepy places in New England, uh, my hometown Coventry. There's I actually have the remains of that building, um, and talked about the story, what the the story around was it. But um, is there one in my area now? I now live in West Warwick. Well, I don't know if this counts, but the apartment I used to live in, which is like literally like five minutes that way. Uh, was haunted. I mean, I had many paranormal experiences in that house. Um, in this area, I don't know. I haven't had anything going on here or anything like that. So, and I haven't really had anybody talking about, "Ooh, this house is haunted." So, number eight: If you were alive back during the Salem witch trials and you were accused of being a witch, would you protest your innocence even if it meant being hung or pled guilty in the hope of being let off from being hung? Well. I gotta look, you gotta look at it this way. Back then, people were very religious and very superstitious. So most likely, I would have been like a holy roller. Praise God and all that stuff like that. So generally, I'm assuming I would have pled my innocence because if I would have been hung, I would have joined God. That would have been my belief. Um, if, if I take my present status and what I know now and transport it back then and have all the same mentality? Probably, yeah. Because, you know, um, screw that, you know, I ain't getting hanged. <laughs> you know, but if, like I said, if, I, if my mentality, if my mentality matches what the people were like back then, yeah, I would have been hanged. But back now, it's like, nah, screw it. I'm not going to get hanged because, you know, your people are nuts. Um, anyway, Number nine, almost done. I like this tag, actually. I'm very much enjoying this tag. Would you protect yourself in a zombie apocalypse? Where would you go if a loved one, your spouse, your parent, your child became a zombie? Would you be able to kill them or let them eat you? Um, I'm going to go with the Hollywood version of the zombie apocalypse. There's actually an interesting article, if you can find it, talking about, like, all you really have to do is just find a place and wait it out for like eight days because in reality the zombies would actually decompose because of diseases and stuff like that and hot and cold they will actually decompose in about three to five days to a point they're completely useless but so let's go to the more Hollywood when all that logic and science is gone okay where would you pr okay so where would I go uh, I would try to protect myself you know why not? I mean, kind of like you think about it, the zombie apocalypse could be fun because you get to like kill zombies and be like zombie land, you know, have like pianos dropping on zombies and stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, you know, human survival, basic needs, you know. Now, where would you go is obviously would be someplace like an island would generally be good or a very high mountain that's very hard to climb because zombies are generally supposed to be slow, you know. Um... If there was a real zombie apocalypse, you know, one thing that they should do is, like, blow up the bridges around Manhattan. You can kind of isolate that. Or Hawaii should also be pretty safe. Or some of the, the Key West areas and stuff like that. But generally an island would be good to go. Um, if your loved one, your spouse, your parent, your child became a zombie, would you be able to kill them or let them eat you? Oh, hell yeah, I can kill them. Um, I'm actually under the understanding that maybe this has come from some of my experience of some death in my family, but, you know... Once they're gone, they're gone. Their body might, you know, it's kind of like a more of a sad tale, but when my dad was um, on life support and his um, brain um, had severe, bad, severe brain damage, um, his body was alive, but it was clearly he wasn't there. Um, it was obvious to me. So the same thing with a zombie, any one of my families or anything like that, is like, you know, um, if they're a zombie, they're dead. You know, they're not there anymore and stuff. But I would like it if I was a zombie. I would just love to be a zombie. Um, I actually told my friends, if I've ever become a zombie, just release me in a heavy populated area with innocent people so I can go and eat people. Because that would just be rocky and fun. All right. Number 10. Which do you prefer, raking leaves or shoveling snow? Raking leaves. 
I'll just leave it at that. That's easy. So, anyway, hope some of you are my friends like to respond to this too. But, bye now.